Today on Drove to Co Garage, we're going to replace the driver's side door handle on this 2009 328i. You can see over time the plastic paint has started to flake off and it's become quite rough. This is not a replacement part from BMW, but we'll show you how to make the repair yourself. Okay, start by removing this trim piece, uh, probably from the front. There's a series of plastic catches. It's always a good idea to have some spares. If you do so beginning at the door jam, use your pry tool and pull out on the wood trim. Pull forcefully, but don't try not to bend it as much as you can. And there is a clip on the end. Check that you got all the catches, and then uh, you'll need a Torx T20 in order to release the three bolts that hold the door card onto the door. Keep in mind, it may be tight if it hasn't been removed since it left the factory. There's a number of attachment points around the outside, it's held on with small plastic clips. You want to pull from the bottom of the door, again use your pry tool. Don't put too much pressure because you don't want to rip the vinyl on the edge. Uh, but once you start, you get the first one off, you can get your hands behind it and then just pull out. Remember to release from the bottom and then you're going to pull from the top. Those three bolts are still in the middle, uh, so as you pull on it, watch, uh, I'll probably send one flying here in a second. Um, you want to make sure that you keep track of those three bolts so you can put them back in later. Then start working at the bottom of the door. Uh, remove the electric con electrical connection for the puddle lamp. Uh, then the speakers, the window switches. Uh, take a look at the catches that BMW uses. These small trim pieces of plastic that actually attach to the door tend to break. You may have already been missing a couple. It's good to have a few spares before. The leather interior cars are actually easier to work with because the armrest bolts through. There's little plastic studs and nuts that you need to remove. But for the vinyl cars, you'll need to drill out the part of the plastic that was melted down. So I'm carefully using a half-inch drill. I'm just going to drill down far enough till I get flush with the surface and the armrest will eventually just pop right out. Once you've got them all drilled out, carefully flip it over because you don't want to drop the armrest on the ground. It will, if you've got all of them, it will just pop out into your hand. Now at this point, we're going to set aside the door card. Make sure you don't set it on the driveway, you're going to risk of ripping the vinyl. Now we want to look, there's two more that we're going to have to drill. The way this uh, piece fits in, uh, the backing plate is pressed on, you can actually pop that off if you want to look inside. But in order to remove the handle from the door rest, you have to remove two more of these spots that have been melted. So once again I'm going to use, uh, carefully use my drill, just want to drill enough that I can pop off the melted part and it will fall out uh, the other side. Once I get them both off I can just push it out. Before you can remove the door handle you need to remove the switches for the windows. Those just press out. There's four catches and you can just push it out. And this is, uh, I haven't figured out how I'm going to repaint this or if I'm just going to buy a new piece. I'll probably just buy a new one. We'll set that aside for now. Now we can get to the door handle, which is the thing we've been trying to get to, and it just pops out. When we take a closer look at it, you can see how badly the paint has started to peel off. What I didn't show was how to remove the paint. It's actually very simple. Just run it under hot water, rub your thumb on it, and it will just peel off. So one thing to keep in mind if you're working with uh, Sensitec, a vinyl interior car versus a leather interior car, uh, these grab handles, although they look the same, they're actually not the same size. <clears throat> the leather interior actually has a bigger grab handle than the vinyl interior car. <clears throat> we had experimented uh, with uh, vinyl. These are very hard to wrap. Uh, we've got a pretty decent vinyl coating on it. Uh, I'm going to try something different with this, uh, this one from the car we're working on right now. Um, it wasn't in that bad a shape, it was mostly scratched on the surface. Um, so we're going to try to just repaint this top layer. Yes. Prep the piece by scuffing it with a scotch bite pad and then using masking tape to mask off the areas we don't want to paint. I thought it'd save you the pain of watching paint dry, so we actually applied uh, two coats of plastic primer and two coats of black satin paint to reach this point. And now we're ready for reassembly. The door handle actually will click into the armrest and that's how you'll know you got it in the right position. Click it in and then you attach it uh, securely from behind. We're going to use a screw on one side. There's enough room that we can actually secure it with a screw. And on the other side, we'll use a soldering iron and just melt the end. Now we're ready to reinsert 
the switch control for the uh, power windows. This just clicks in. This is one of the few pieces you could actually remove without removing the entire armrest. You can carefully pry this from above. Set it in place and it clicks in and it locks the handle. Now when we flip it back over, we could start to work on re-securing the armrest to the door panel itself. Where possible, we're going to use screws to reattach it and for the remaining ones, we're going to use a soldering iron. Just melt the plastic and it'll expand enough that we can get a good mushroom head on it and it'll reattach uh, quite securely. Once it's done, flip it back over. There's still two more that have to be soldered. There are two on the front. One of them, we've got enough room that we'll actually be able to come back and use a screw later on. But for right now. We want to start by working from the bottom up. Installation is a reverse of removal. Make sure your clips are all good. You may have had to replace some of them. Um, also make sure that you've made all the attachments. I attached uh, a couple of screws to reinforce, otherwise they were attached with the soldering iron. And now I'm going to start by first attaching the wiring to the puddle lamp at the bottom of the door and then just work my way up. So it goes puddle lamp, then the wiring to the electric window switches, the wiring to the speakers, and finally the cable that runs to the door handle. You want to make sure that you've got everything attached in the right place before you start to attach it and force it onto the door. Uh, it helps to have somebody who can uh, lend you a hand at this point. Um, I also found it helpful if you first route the locking mechanism indicator and then attach it in the corner first. So once you get everything connected on the inside, um, start by getting it to latch first. Here, press across this way, make sure the pins line up, and then press down. So, just make sure these line up. Kind of fun. All right, so last thing to do before we attach the wood trim is put back in the screws and work from this side. Comparison to make is this piece of interior trim because this is not faded. So these two look very close. When we replace the switch panel, then these two will look better. It looks pretty good. It's not perfect, um, but it's uh, much better than before. So thanks for watching.